Welcome! This video will show how to make a dice using Autodesk Fusion Rigamuth or MakerBox. Um, in the model environment, you'll notice on the top surface here, or the top part here, we've got some tools. We've got the Create tools. Uh, on the right hand side of it, we've got the Modify menu. Down the left hand side, we have our model tree. Um, main difference, difference here is you'll see sketches form in this area just here that you use. And down the bottom corner about here, you'll see the features that you use. At the bottom, we've got our, our toolbar, should I say, for orientating round. So we've got our rotate button here, uh, a look at button, which looks at the, the bit of paper, the work plane that you're drawing on, the pan button, the zoom in, zoom out. This button here is the fit all or zoom all. If you click on it, you can see we can do zoom window, which means drag a box around things. We've got our display settings, our grid and snap settings, and viewports. And like Inventor, we've got our, a, a cube in the corner here for orientation, so I can click on different parts of the cube to make things turn around. Let's start by making a box. To make something, what we need to do is do a sketch. So we're going to click on the Create Sketch button at the top corner. And when we bring our mouse back across, we have three work planes, or three bits of paper, that we can draw on. We've got one on a tabletop, and two, two others that are vertical, one facing the front and one facing towards the right. For the dice, we want to click on the top work plane. Now once you've clicked on this work plane, it allows us to draw. The main thing we want to do is draw a 2D shape and then turn it into a 3D shape by selecting a feature afterwards. A main difference you might notice at this stage from Inventor is the sketch doesn't automatically turn round to face you. You need to make it turn round. So on this right hand side here, this pop-up window's obviously popped up. We want to click the Look At button. If we click that there, the paper will turn round to face you straight on. We can then draw a box using the drawing tools at the top. I'm going to use a two-point rectangle drawing tool and start by drawing in the center. Good practice, always start in the center. So when you click here, and as you can see, I'm going to drag out a box. I'm not holding down the mouse button, I'm just moving my mouse. At this stage, I can actually add some sizes in to make it a little bit quicker for me. We're going to make a box that's 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. So I can type in 100 just now into that box. Hit the tab key on the keyboard. I can type in 100 in this box. And then the enter or return key. And it'll draw the square to the correct size. Now I want to kind of position this. So it's in the, the center. I can come down to the bottom and click the fit button. What that'll do, make everything fit in the page like zoom all would. Now I need to make sure when I draw I've got an outline sketch. So that means a lines that start and finish at the same spot. If I've got lines maybe going through where my mouse is just now, this the shape won't work. It won't be able to be made into a 3D shape. So it must be an outline shape. I'm happy with my sketch though, so I can go across here and click finish sketch. Either the green tick in the corner or this button just here. Our next step is to make it 3D. Now I'm going to turn this into a 3D shape a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to zoom it, look at it from the front and then in 3D. What we then want to do is we want to extrude this up the way, which means stretch this shape up the way to make a cube. So I'm going to click on the extrude button across here. It should automatically select your sketch. I can then type in the size I want under the distance. So to make it a cube I need to make sure all the sides are the same. So I'm going to type in 100 and then click OK. I can then click on the fit button once more to make it fit into the screen like so. Now at this stage here it's quite good to get used to moving around in the screen. If I hold down the middle mouse button, that's the scroll ball, and move my mouse about the place. This is called panning. It's moving the object about but like you put your hand on the model and moving it side to side. If I take the scroll button and move it backwards and forwards, it zooms in and zooms out where the mouse is. If I hold down the shift key and the middle mouse button, it rotates it around. These are quite quick, way, uh, quick ways of ma uh, manipulating your model. You can also do that down here. So I can use the rotation tool and rotate the model. If I come to the side, it goes a circle shape instead of Two, two kind of like curved lines, I can rotate it around in one, one plane. I can use the hand tool, which is the pan button, and move it around the place. And to deselect things, if I just hit the escape key, it stops things being selected. 
on the left hand side on the sketches you can see the sketch we've drawn and that's our original square shape and then down the bottom here we can see the extrude the 3d thing we've done now what we want to do is we want to turn this into a dice so the next thing i want to do is repeat the same skills i've done the main process you need to remember is to tell the computer where to draw draw in 2d and then change it into 3d shape by clicking the 3d feature so i'm going to draw on this button once more and then select this time the top surface of the model. The main difference is we're not selecting a bit of paper, a work plane, we're selecting the side of the model, the face of the model. I want to now come to the bottom corner, uh, across here to the pop-up window and select the look at button so we can see it face on. I'm going to hit the fit button once more as well so I can make it fit into the screen. Now we're going to do a dice which is going to have six numbers on it and we're going to represent each number with a circle. So I'm going to take the circle tool and I'm going to draw a circle roughly where I want it to be. So this will be the centre of the circle. I can drag, click, click and move my mouse out. And I'm not clicking and dragging, I'm just moving my mouse. I can then type in the size of the circle. For this model we're going to make them all 20 millimetres. And then I want to hit enter or return on the keyboard. And it puts a circle at size 20 on the side of my, uh, my, of my dice. But what I now want to do is position it. Now it's in the centre, I can see that using the grid in the background, but I want to constrain it, which means I want to stop it moving. And to do that, I'm going to add dimension lines on. So I'm going to click the dimension button just here. I'm going to click on the circle, move my mouse up to the edge. When the edge goes blue, I'm going to click once more, and move my mouse back down, and click a, th a third time, which will place the size. And we want to type in 50, or oh, already is, and hit enter or return on the keyboard. I also want to do the exact same thing, going from the uh, horizontally, I'm going to do it from the left hand side here, and it positions a circle in the middle. I finished my sketch, so I can then click the finish sketch button. Again I'm going to rotate it round into 3D. And we now want to make this so it's an indent. At the moment we've kind of just drawn on the side of the model just now. That won't show up if we were to make that picture. We actually want to uh, indent it in the way. So to indent it in we're going to click on the extrude button. We select the circle by clicking on it, and across here I need to do a couple of things. At the moment it's going to extrude it in the direction of this arrow, which is up the way. So I actually want it to go in the way, so under distance I'm going to put a minus. And I'll make it go down the way. And we're going to go down by 5mm, so I can type in 5. You can see it goes in the way like so. It automatically changes it to cut, which is known as subtraction, and it cuts the hole into the surface like that. And as you can see here, we've now got a, 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 an indent on in the side of the model to represent number one. Now we want to do the same for all the sides. Now the reason we do a dice is because you're going to repeat the same skills six times. I, I'm not going to do the whole thing in an example here. I'm just going to do a few numbers so you can see. Um, the main thing with dice is that the opposite sides add up to seven. So opposite this one, on the bottom end in this case, I'll be looking to do number six. What we'll do is we'll do number two next. I'm going to click on the sketch button once more, I'm going to select this side of the model and then I'm going to click the look at button so I can see it face on. And then I'm going to click the fit button to make it go into the centre and we have the side of our model facing us. For number two the circles go diagonally. So I'm going to click and make a circle and type in 20 and I can do the same again. And again, I want to be then position them so they're in the right place. So I can click the dimension button in this case. And like before, I can click the circle, click the top edge, and I can type in the size. Now we want to make these 25 millimeters in from the edge. So 25 in from the top and 25 in from the side. If you do that, when you come to do number six, for example, you'll find that the circles are fitting nicely. So the circle position size is either going to be 25 or 50 depending on the position of the circle. Okay, there's my two circles drawn. Happy with the position. You can then click the finish sketch button. I'm going to look at it in 2D. Uh, 3D should I say it? I should I say. And we're now going to extrude these in like we did for number one. So I'm going to click the extrude button. Select my two circles. Just take care of clicking inside the circles. Now I was pointing out this way. To make it go in, what I'm going to do is click on distance and put minus 5. It remembers what you've done last though, so if I click here, you'll see I've got minus 5 already selected. So I'll speed things up a little bit. 
Make sure cut is selected so it subtracts the material away. Then click OK and you've got the number 2 represented. Okay, same for number 3. If I just rotate this round so you can see it from the other side, you can see we've got three numbers on and what we'll do, we'll pause there, obviously you would like to, uh, should continue on to make the rest of the numbers on the dice. To round the edges of an object, it's called filleting and the fillet button is up here, you can tell by the icon. So if I click the fillet button, it brings up this pop-up window. What I want to do is then go and select all the edges I'd like to fill it. Now, Take care of doing this, go to the edge weight till it highlights. My uh, example is highlighting a grey colour. I can rotate it round, remember shift key with the mouse button to do the other side. And we're going to make the size of this fillet 10 millimetres. So fill in, uh, type in 10, you can hit enter or return on the keyboard. If we rotate it back round, you can see the dice looks a bit better, a bit more realistic already. Okay, our next thing we're going to move on to is we're going to add some colour to this. To add colour, it's the same as, in, as it is an inventor, but you find it under Modify. So if we can click on Modify and come down to Appearance, it brings up a pop-up window, so it should appear over here. And there we go. Now what we're looking to do is put model uh, materials into this space here and then apply it into our design. You can search in the library for some appearances. So I'd like to make my dice red. So I'm going to type in red. If I click on here, you'll see I've got lots and lots of choices. Uh, let's choose one. I'm in, okay, I'm going to take this one here. What I'm going to do is going to click on it and drag it onto this space just here. So I'd like to make the dots on my dice black. So I'm going to search for black this time. What I then want to do is I want to apply these colours across to this model. I've got two options, I can apply it to the body or the component which means the whole thing or I could apply it to faces. What I'd like to do is make my dice red with black spots. So with this selected first of all, I can take the red option, the aluminium anodized glossy red and drag it across and drop it on top of this model. What will happen is it will colour all red. I can then select the faces option and I can take the black option here and drop onto the faces. Now faces are like a part, the side of the model. So I can select the weight tick colours and then a part of that circle just there and make that black. And do the same for this circle there. Once you've coloured your design as you like it, what we can then do is we can close the appearance gallery. The next step is to actually go and save your model. Finally, we like to make a picture of this. What we want it to do to take a picture is we want to go up to where it says design and come down to Render. Now this is a separate part of the program. Again though it's using things that are similar that you'd use in Inventor. For this model what we're going to do is we're going to do this option here which is called a Capture Image. We could do a Render version which will give us a much higher quality. If we click on Capture Image, um, what we can do is we can have a transparent background which would be quite good for this model. Um, it has a fixed resolution of 72 pixels per inch, which isn't that good quality, but for what we're going to use it for, it'll be more than good enough. So I'm going to click OK. Again, I can call it a name if I wish. I'm going to keep it that name there. It's like different file types. I've got PNG, JPEG or TIFF. The best option is a TIFF, so I'm going to select TIFF. And I can either save it to the project in the cloud, or I can save it to my computer. I'm going to keep the save to my computer option and I'm going to leave it on my desktop at the moment to save. And I can then click the save button. Thank you for watching.